Welcome to episode eight. Today we are putting the O in MMO and I'm very excited because this is the start of the networking portion uh, of building an MMO, which is probably the most interesting uh, part of building an MMO. So we've done quite a bit of rendering code so far, uh, but we have a window that opens up a little island that we've kind of randomly generated. So that's all working now. But I think I think now is a good time to start adding the basics of what our networking framework will look like. So that's the direction we're going to go with this. So we'll build this networking framework uh, and that'll be useful for our uh, eventual game logic that we need to add. Okay, so the first we're gonna do in our MMO project is make a CMD folder, and that's gonna hold our two uh, project binaries, one for the server and one for the client. Then I'm gonna copy all the client-specific folders and files, like images and the main.go project we've been working on, and I'm just gonna copy paste that, or rather cut paste it into the uh, client. Then in the server folder, I'm gonna make a main.go file. Then I'm gonna open my server main.go file and we can begin coding. So the first thing we want to do is specify a package main, then we can specify our import statements, and we're just going to import log right now, and then we'll define a main function, and in here we're going to put uh, just a quick printout starting server. Let's run that, just to make sure everything's working properly, and there you go, starting server, looks good. Now we can write some actual server side code. So the first thing we're going to build here is a network listener. Uh, and we're going to listen on TCP port 8000. Uh, in this notation, we have the full colon 8000. That's going to list on all. I, that's going to listen on all IP addresses. Then for error handling, we're just going to panic if there's an error because if we can't open a listener, then that's kind of fatal. Uh, now we can create an HTTP server, uh, and in here we're going to specify a new uh, data type, which is going to call, we're going to call WebSocket Server, and that's going to implement the handler interface. Then we're going to have a read timeout of 10 seconds, and we'll also have a write timeout of 10 seconds. Let's go ahead and uh, implement this handler interface for our WebSocket server data type. So let's specify the struct here. Then we can build the uh, serve HTTP function, uh, which will help us implement that handler interface. And the inputs to this is an HTTP response writer and the original uh, pointer to the HTTP request. So that's a good starting point. We won't add any code in there just yet, but uh, it's good to have for now. And let's update our uh, printout to also print out the listener address. Now we're going to start our server, but first we want to make an error C channel, and that's going to be used to listen for errors returned by the server. So then we'll start our server in a Go routine so we can continue on our, our main .go, or our main function. So we'll start our server with the listener object passed in, and we'll listen on that error C channel for any responses. Uh, we're also going to make a SIGS channel, and this is going to listen, or this is going to be for OS signals. Uh, and then we're going to have this uh, get notified, or rather it's just going to listen for uh, interrupt signals for now. But that can be used if the user wants to uh, manually cancel the program. Then we're going to have a select statement which listens for uh, either the error C, uh, and it'll also listen for the uh, SIGS channel. And then for the error C, we'll just print out uh, that there was an error. And then for the SIGS case, uh, we'll just say that we're terminating. Next, we're going to build a context object, and this is going to be used to uh, gracefully shut down the server in case we get this far. So we'll make it with, uh, uh, starting with the background, we'll add a timeout of 10 seconds to that context. And then we'll defer cancel just in case we get to the end, end of the main uh, function and it hasn't canceled yet. We'll defer cancel on it. And then we'll actually call the shutdown with that context object and check an error. Uh, and then if there's an error, then we will, then we'll just print it out, and then we'll also print out the error. Let's run this. Cool. So our server started. Uh, let me open up Chrome and uh, show you what, what this kind of looks like. Okay, so you can see if we click refresh now on localhost port 8000, uh, you'll get a status of 2000. Now let's cancel our server and then we'll rerun this, uh, we'll rerun this uh, call to localhost port 8000 and you'll see that we get errors now and that's because uh, the server is no longer running. Cool, so everything seems to be working uh, properly. But now what's left is to implement our WebSocket server. So in here, we basically just need to convert the HTTP original request into a um, into a WebSocket object. So the library we're going to use is uh, this one that I found. Uh, there's a lot of options, but and you can pick whichever you like. But uh, that's the one that I like the most. So then back in our serve HTTP function, uh, we're going to accept or do WebSocket accept. And that'll be used to accept connections, or rather transform the HTTP request into a WebSocket connection. 
and it'll return this C variable, which will be the WebSocket connection object. And if there was an error, we're just gonna print out error accepting WebSocket and the error, and then we're gonna return. We don't wanna panic here because that will crash the web server. Uh, so we're just gonna return gracefully. Then we're gonna make a background context object. Uh, we're gonna use that to convert the uh, WebSocket.con object into a generic uh, net.con object. And this isn't mandatory, but I like to do it uh, just because we're gonna implement our own binary protocol on top of WebSockets, rather than using something like JSON. Then we're gonna take that netcon object and we're gonna pass it to a new function called serve netcon. And we're gonna start in a go routine so that our serve HTTP function can end. But then this serve netcon function will do uh, basically all of the data receiving uh, for, this WebSocket for this WebSocket connection that we've opened. So in here, we haven't opened uh, socket, so we need to close it. Um, so let's do con.close and we'll check for errors if there are any. And we'll put this in the defer, uh, obviously, because we don't want to close. We want to close uh, at the end of this, or when this function returns. So the next thing we're going to do in here is we're going to have one piece of program running, which is going to be used to read all of the messages received by the socket, and that'll be executing in a go routine. And then after that, we're going to have a timeout manager, and we need a timeout manager just in case the connection uh, closes in an ungraceful way. Uh, we have no way of knowing, like, if someone pl pulls a plug somewhere uh, between the connection of the server and the client. So if that ever happens, there's no notific notification to the server that the that the user disconnected. Uh, so we need a timeout manager, and uh, the timeout manager will basically be in place to uh, ensure that we get kind of keep alive messages at some periodic rate. So we'll basically structure our program like this. We'll have a read data section, and then we're gonna also have a uh, manage timeout section. In the read data section, we're gonna have a, uh, we're gonna execute that in a go routine. In the manage timeout section, we'll kind of be all the uh, timeout managing stuff. That'll be executing in a for loop kind of continuously. So let's start with the uh, go routine. Uh, first, we need a message size, uh, and this is basically gonna be the maximum uh, payload size that we could potentially send from the client to the server. So we're just gonna call that four kilobytes for now. And then let's define a buffer to read that data into from the from the socket. It'll just be a buffer of bytes uh, at size, max message size. And then in a for loop, we're basically gonna read uh, constantly. So we'll do con.read and we'll read into that message buffer that we just created. And then if there was an error, we're just gonna lock it as usual. And because read errors could indicate that the socket closed, uh, we're just gonna return as well. So that'll exit this go routine then. And then just as a starting point, what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna print out what was sent to us. Eventually we'll have some more complicated logic of uh, like doing things with messages and decoding them, but for now we'll just print out the data. Okay, let's make this more complicated with the timeout manager now. So we'll define a few variables at the top, specifically timeout in seconds, and that'll just be 60 seconds for now. And we'll have a timeout channel, and that'll be used to send uh, one of two uh, message types to the timeout manager from the read data go routine. So what will be called stop timeout and that'll just be value zero. And then it'll be called cont timeout and that'll be just value one. So then the timeout manager can take those two signals um, and then determine uh, kind of the state of the go routine and what it should be doing. So for example, in our uh, error, co error handling code for our read, uh, if there if there ever was an error, then we're gonna send the stop timeout message to the timeout channel. And basically we wanna stop the timeout because of a read error. Uh, and then we uh, then if we do receive a valid message, we wanna send the cont timeout message so that the, so that the timeout manager knows that we just received a uh, valid timeout. So we're kind of taking the timeout watcher just so that we don't timeout. And then in the manage timeout handling code, we'll write a select statement to wait on that timeout um, channel. And then we'll have this uh, case time after timeout seconds uh, case statement. And this will be used to basically time out the select in case uh, we've waited too long. We've received no signals from the read function. So in this case, we will just print out the, that the user has timed out. And then we'll break to this exit timeout label. And then we'll define this exit timeout label at the top of our for loop. And that'll help us uh, exit the for loop immediately. So then we can implement the logic for our uh, timeout handler case. So then we'll just check to see if the uh, stop timeout message was sent to this uh, timeout channel. And if it was, then that kind of indicates that we want to manually uh, that we want to manually stop the timeout manager. So if that ever happens, we're just gonna do the same break to exit timeout label, and that'll exit the for loop. Cool. And then uh, basically, so 
If we ever get down here, then we basically passed the timeout manager. So that indicates that either, either it was manually stopped or the timeout of 60 seconds occurred. So that'll indicate that we need to uh, exit our serve netcon function. Now let's try to run this. Uh, oops, I forgot to import this WebSocket package. Let me import that now. Go get. All right, now we've downloaded that. Now we can try to rerun it again. So we had an error. And specifically the error was that uh, we called go on our Lambda function, uh, but we didn't actually call the function. So we have to add parentheses here to indicate that we're calling the function. And then starting server 8000 printed, which looks good. Now we can go to our localhost again, and you'll see that we actually have this WebSocket protocol violation. So there's some WebSocket work that's being, that, that it's trying to do, uh, but the request we're making from the browser doesn't have the right um, like WebSocket uh, upgrade flags. So we're getting this error code uh, 426. So what we'll do is we'll write a WebSocket client in our client uh, main.go, and uh, that'll be used to actually do a WebSocket upgrade. So let's open our client main.go file, and then we'll switch over to that. That'll be our primary buffer that we'll op operate in for a little bit. We'll import our uh, WebSocket library. We'll just define our two sections. So in our main function, we will have a start pixel section, which starts our kind of OpenGL renderer. And then we'll have a set, set up networking section at the top right before that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll specify a web, a, or sorry, we'll specify a URL at destination uh, WebSocket localhost 8000. In place of WS, you can, you can also use TCP, I think, um, but I'm just gonna use WS because we're using WebSockets here. We'll make a context uh, background variable and that'll be used to dial our WebSocket. So we'll pass the context into there, we'll pass the URL into there, and we'll pass nil for the dial um, options. And then if there was an error here, we'll just check it to panic. And then let's print out the connection response and we'll just print out the uh, response object to see kind of what's going on. And then we'll start a Go routine and this will, uh, in this Go routine, we're basically going to um, have a for loop that runs forever. So the first thing we'll do is we'll declare our counter variable as byte zero. We'll just cast it to a, cast a zero to a byte to specify the data type. Then we'll sleep for a second because we don't want to be uh, constantly spamming the server. And we'll do con.write and we'll write a byte buffer with only one value inside of it, which is our counter value. And then if there was an error, we kind of want to check that. So we will, and we'll print out if there was an error. And then we'll also return out of this go routine in case there was an error. And then we'll just, uh, at the bottom of this, we'll have a um, like sent in bytes me message that'll print out how many bytes we sent and then we'll increment our counter. Then let's open up a terminal in our server and we'll start that here. Then we can go run our server and now the server started at port 8000. Let's go to our client now and we'll execute that. So we'll do go generate and go run on our client. And there is a syntax error, I guess a missing comma here. Oh yeah, and then I also forgot to import some things that we're using now. And then I had also uh, forgotten to uh, specify, or sorry, convert the con object uh, from the websocket.con object. So we're using technically a net.con net .con object instead of a websocket.con object. So we build that here. So we just do websocket.netcon and I'll cast it um, kind of internally. We'll pass the context in. We'll also pass uh, the websocket dot C and then the uh, WebSocket binary protocol, message binary protocol. And then we can run our client. So the uh, game's running. And then kind of in the background, you see we're sending in bytes. And if I hop over to my server, you can see that they're receiving the right messages. So we receive zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 15. And that just continues to run. And then you can see if I cancel my client, we do get um, that there was a like failed to get reader because the, the connection had been manually closed. And then if I restart my client, the counter starts over again. So it looks like everything's running properly. Cool, well, uh, looks like we've built our basic client server architecture. I know we're only sending data in one direction uh, and it's very basic right now, but uh, we'll be improving it in the future and adding a lot more features to it. But this is kind of how you have to start, so this is how we're starting. If you like this video and want to see more, then feel free to hit the subscribe button. And then uh, if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments.